This is Shelley Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the Cambridge House International Canadian Investor Conference, Vancouver 2014. I have Brent Cook, a very recognizable face in the industry. From Exploration Insights, he's a speaker at this Cambridge House Conference. Welcome back to SNN Live. Always glad to be here. Good to see you, bud. So, what are you speaking on? in these turbulent times in the mining mineral resource junior market? Well, I've got two parts to my talk. It's gonna be, the, you know, the part one is gonna be about where the industry is, why it's where it is, and what it's leading to is that in the next year or two years, the mining companies are gonna be desperate for legitimate economic deposits. And the second part of my talk is gonna be about how we as investors can screen through the thousand or so companies to identify the few companies or exploration groups that actually are hold those projects or are going to find those projects. Because uh, I think a few years down the road they're going to be extremely valuable. Okay, so let's start with part two. Hmm. I have investors as an audience. Let's tell them what you think about what's going to happen as an investor in the market and kind of give a little direction as to what they should do. Well, right now, I think we're right into what I'm calling the, the great dust bowl of the Canadian junior market. I suspect it's going to last for a ways, uh, but I know we're going to come out of it. Metals are cyc always cyclical, uh, demand is always increasing, and we're just not finding enough deposits to replace what's being mined, and that's really key. And with the drop in the metal prices, particularly gold, the mining companies are cutting exploration, they're cutting uh, development projects, they're cutting everywhere they can, and they're high grading their deposits, which means they're pulling out the best, essentially gutting what they've got left. So one, two years from now, they're not gonna have any deposits to replace what they've mined, and we need to own those deposits over this coming year, because I think we're gonna make a lot of money. What is the influence on a, on a continuing drop in the price of gold on those same companies who are, you know, going after the easy, you know, deposits that they have, rather than going and looking for new exploratory projects. Well, I've got a great slide in my presentation where I show a real-life deposit in, in West Africa where the original deposit was four million ounces at two grams. So what the company's done is gone on and pulled out the guts of it, which averages about three and a half grams, but is only. Uh, what I said, about 2 million ounces, leaving behind the rest. I think 1.2 million ounces gets left behind, and the grade has been lowered so much of that, or the grade is so much lower, and the strip has increased on that, that that 1.2 million ounces is no longer economic. And that's happening across the board. So not only are they not finding new stuff, but they're sterilizing a lot of what used to be considered reserves. So that really puts pressure on new exploration. Is there enough going on now to suffice for the future? Or is it? Or are these companies that are juniors so dormant that then they don't even have the capital to look, let alone drill? That's exactly the problem, is we are not finding enough new economic deposits to replace what's being mined. And, and, and this, is, this is gonna be the fun part. This is gonna be the real fun part where if we own the half dozen or dozen companies that are competent, have the competent people, know how to explore or have a deposit that fits into the lowest quartile in terms of costs, they're going to be worth a lot of money. And, you know, it's going to take a while. But this is what happened from, say, 97 to 2002. But you look at that. I know, you know, I've got another demonstration where stocks you could buy at, I think it was like 50 cents, went up to $17. And it was just a competent group that knew how to find and develop copper deposits. That's going to happen again. So how do you sift through the thousand or so juniors and come up with the right ones to own and let's say long term? Well, that's my job. That's what I do in my newsletter. So the easy way is to buy my letter. Um, otherwise, right, okay, <laughs> let's give out the website for the letter. All right, it's explorationinsights.com and the letter's about what I'm actually doing with my money in the sector, why I'm buying it, what my thesis is, and no one pays me anything to say anything about anyone. So it's just as honest as I can make it as to what I'm doing with my money. Uh, otherwise, you need to do quite a bit of due diligence. Mining and exploration is very technically complex, and the, the science of geology is a bit, it's fuzzy, if you will. It's half art, half science. So it's, because you're looking for things that you cannot see. And so 
it's tougher that way. So it, it, you've got to really follow these things. And you know, rule number one, once you identify something you're interested in in a company, a project, look for the fatal flaw. We know that most of these are going to collapse. So you can even make good money on a stock going up as it start, people get excited. But if you can find that fatal flaw before the rest of the crowd, you can still make good money and get out. And that's, you know, that's part two of this is catch the fatal flaw and get out before everybody else recognizes it. So when you recognize something that should be bought and you go in and buy it, do you go then and recommend it in your newsletter that you bought it so it's a good idea for these reasons listed and then other uh, investors can follow your lead, jump in, still get it at around the price that you uh, bought it at, of course, indicating so? Yes, I mean, I don't recommend anything. What I do is just tell you what I'm doing with my money and why. And I think it's up to, you know, everybody's got a different preference as to what they want, different investment goal, and people make their own decisions. But I lay out the data, you make your decision. Well, you know, you look good. You know, you, you, you look like you're a prosperous prospector in the market. <laughs> so you must be doing something right. Let's give that website out one more time explorationinsights.com. There's also a number of free reports and, and, and such there, so take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, for more information, Exploration Insights, Brent Cook, very experienced in this trade. He's a speaker at the Cambridge House Conference. We are at the Cambridge House International Canadian Investor Conference here in Vancouver 2014. I'm Shelley Kraft. This is SNN Live. Brent, thanks again for coming on to SNN Live. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome.